is Coach Ben back. Um, today I want to reach out to um, all the beginners that are out there, okay? Um, and I want to give you guys three movements that you really need to focus on nailing to ensure that you're going to get progression um, and results in the, in the gym and at home while you're moving, okay? Now, um, being a beginner is a, a super exciting um, time, but it's very intimidating and overwhelming as well, okay? Generally, we see um, two types of scenarios when a beginner starts to train in the gym, okay? And one, the first one is that they tag along with a mate who has been training correctly for years, all right? And they learn the bro science of lifting, probably not doing the movements that are necessary and at their level for their goals because their friend has been training for so long, okay? So you get thrown straight into movements that aren't the right progression and not at the right loading or level for where you're at, okay? So you either end up super sore, um, you know, you feel like a, a, a bit of an idiot doing the movements um, or you feel really unbalanced and, and just not stable, okay? The second scenario is um, that you're completely new, okay? You're nervous, all right? You've, you're very much in ed, uneducated on how to get the best results. Um, and they tend to stick to the safe and perceived effective um, cardio area, okay? Um, now, often... These guys aren't using the machines at a high enough intensity to see the results, okay? So they slog it out for two to three weeks, um, don't really see any progression, um, get demotivated, and then you don't really see them back in the gym, okay? Now, um, they give up without really venturing or attempting to venture into the parts of the gym which are going to get them the effective results quicker, okay? So, um, as a coach, the scenarios, like those two scenarios really, really make me feel uneasy, all right? And starting out on your health and fitness journey, like I said, should be exciting, it should be motivating, and it should leave, you should be able to leave each session feeling better than you walked in, okay? So, the goal of what I want to give to you guys today is four exercises or, or movement types that you guys need to nail that you can then build upon and progress in, into new variations of that movement um, that's going to keep you guys excited, progressing, and even more motivated to keep coming back and achieving those goals, okay? Um so the four movement patterns, okay, I'm going, to I'm going to call them movement patterns because there are so many different types of each one of these exercises. So I'm going to teach you a patterning and give you my top beginner's movement for each of those patterns, okay? So number one is squatting, okay? Um, now, begin, begin with bodyweight squats on a box or a step, okay? Learn to drive your knees out. Okay, learn to sit back in your heels and use your butt or your glutes for the movement. Okay, get to depth. That's where the box or the, or the step will, will come into it. All right, this, this will be a really good test of your mobility. Um, and there's no better way to mobilize and increase range than to actually train in full range in the movement you're trying to mobilize. Okay. What this does for us is it, it will prevent the risk of any injury and make you feel amazing, all right? When you're fully mobile and or, or you're mobile to a good range and you perform an exercise well, you'll progress for longer, you'll get better results, and you'll just feel better doing the movement, okay? There's nothing worse than getting under a squat bar and not actually being able to get to a body weight squat depth and then try and force yourself into it. It just feels dirty and it's just how you're gonna get injured really, really quickly, okay? Um, number two is the hip hinge, all right? And if, for example of the hip hinge, I'm talking deadlifts, okay? They're arguably the best posterior focused exercise you can do, 
Okay, so posterior talking about the back of our body. Um, it's also the highest incorrectly executed and dangerous exercise for your lower back in the gym. Okay, so the, the actual exercise you should start with is probably a Romanian deadlift or what they call a straight leg deadlift. This will teach you to hinge your hips. Okay, it will allow you to control your core um, so that you stay in a neutral spine position. And it will also hit the hamstrings and glutes, which will more than likely be tight, okay, but also very weak. Right, so it's a really, really good exercise for, for the beginner hip hinge, okay. We then want to move on to upper body, upper body pulling, okay. Um, now, pull-ups are probably the the biggest one that comes to mind here because you can sort of do them nearly anywhere. Um, but they can be super difficult to scale um, the movement, okay, and just complete the movement in general. So what I, I, I would rather you guys move on to some sort of inverted row um, or some along that, that line, okay. So use a, a TRX or hang underneath a bar, um, or on a handrail and, and use it to pull your chest to the bar, okay? Um, this is great for your upper body strength, your posture, okay? It's really, really good for correcting poor posture and preventing shoulder and neck injury when you do it correctly, okay? So it's really, really good at bulletproofing those problem areas, okay? Naturally, in our society, we, we are turning to people that are very um, stuck behind computers on a phone or driving. So we tend to get very rounded anteriorly or frontwards in the upper body. Okay, so focusing on pulling exercises is going to combat that and really open our chest up um, and give us better posture. Okay. My last one is upper body, upper body pressing, okay. Um, now, it should definitely come after pulling because for those exact reasons, as I said, that we're already very anterior. Um, so if we just go straight to pressing before pulling, um, it's going to make us even more so. So I like to focus with my guys on a, on a two or three to one, which means that for every one pressing exercise, I'm doing two to three pulling, okay? Just so that we're really combating and we're keeping that um, that postural and upper body health um, focus. All right. So upper body upper body pressing. Start with push ups. All right. Learn to control the connection between your upper body, lower body, and core. All right. Get your hand positioning under your chest right in the right position, and learn how the elbows move through the range to prevent loading on the shoulder joint and the anterior delt, okay? So many times you see people doing push-ups and the elbows are really flared out to the side or they're like a reverse banana, um, okay? It's, it's super important that if you guys nail a push-up movement, all right, whether it's a push-up on the knees, a push-up off a box, so an incline push-up, um, or just just stand it on your toes, if you can nail this movement, when you transition to a bench or a bench press with dumbbells or anything sort of variation with that, it's the exact same principles when you go into that pressing movement. And, and, and bench pressing is probably, it, it's one of the most popular movements, especially um, targeting like the, the younger male population. Okay, everybody wants a big press but it's also one of the worst executed movements, all right, um, that you see in the gym on a daily basis, okay? So start with push-ups, learn how to, to do them properly, feel that you're doing them properly and stimulating the right muscles, all right, for them to move on to those variations where it's a little bit more complex and challenging, okay? Um, and I know that there's probably some people out there going, oh, you can't get a big chest from doing just push-ups. Um, some of the strongest and best physiques on athletes in the world never pick up a weight, 
right? I don't want you guys to think about gymnasts. These guys train body weight nearly 100% of the time. And if they do use weights, it's very, very minimal, okay? And yet they have some of the best um, balanced and strongest physiques that you'll see in the world, okay? So it's not true, it's about how you apply yourself and we're not saying that you need to be stuck to body weight push-ups forever. It's about learning the, the, the way to move and conduct a push-up to then move into your um, bench press and then making that bench press more effective so that you should be able to progress longer and quicker and get a better result by having done the hard work learning the push-up to start, okay? Um, so guys, they're my top four, all right? Work hard at nailing these. Um, I'll do some follow-up videos on the form for each of these as well and how we can then progress the movement along. So stay tuned for that, okay? Um, thanks for joining and listening and I'll catch you all next time.